Hey guys, Craig here again. Well, as you can see, I've finished up with the Ming Bradley. Um, it's all finished now, painted, weathered. It's got the pigments and everything on there. I've um, used oils and everything for the different colours. All the decals and that are on are in place. And I'm calling this done. Um, basically, it's the, the tricolour NATO with the um, reactive armour in, in desert colours. Uh, as you can see, it's got various shades of um, desert cam on the the side on the on the reactive armor here, and it's all been blended in to try and give it that different tone look to the um, the panels for various weathering uh, scratches and all sorts of stuff going on. Same treatment on the front on the front panels, um, all the decals and everything on. The tracks are all pigmented up. Um, what else did I use on there? I've used oils and um, rubber black for the for the treads on the the tracks. I've also lightly sanded them to get a little bit of texture on the pads to look as though it's actually been moving. Um, little bow shackles and everything on. So desert cam on here then. Same treatment. It's it's various tones of desert cam and then it's all been weathered up and oiled. Uh, same on this side. So that's just the general overview of the, of the vehicle. As you can see all the hatches and everything are open. This is just going to be static. I'm not doing anything with it. Um, so I've just left all the hatches open so you can have a look in. But driver's hatch and all that's done. And as you know everything in there was already pre-done on the other video. Same with the turret, that's all open um, and you can just about see in there with the light that's on. Rear hatch is open for the, the loaders or the, the scouts to reload the toes, hence why it's pointing downwards. And then in the back, I've got the ramp down so you can see him with all the seat belts and everything. Uh, tracks again, same treatment on the back as on the front. And that's that's pretty much it guys so um as you can see all the optics are red looking at various um, reference pictures i've mixed tamiya clear red with this um it's basically called shimmering red and it's like an iridescent paint so depending what angle you look at what basically you get is if you look in the bottom of there it actually changes color depending on the angle you look at it just like the real things so I've mixed that with a Tamiya Red, stuck on all the optics. So when you're looking dead on, it's just red, clear red. When you look at it from an angle, you get the shimmery sort of... Um, you can't really tell on, on the camera, but maybe a little bit better there. Just down here, look. Um, depending what angle you look at, the red really does pop out and you get all those different colours like you do on the real, on the real optics. Um, all the glass and everything's in for the... For the um, tusk armor up the top here, I've left one of the masts off, uh, one of the radio masts, just purely because why not? It's already got two on there, and I didn't want to put the third on. Um, the optics behind the sight here has got the same treatment as the rest of the optics, um, but as per the real thing, the the bit of photo etch mesh that goes over the front to get rid of the glare and everything actually does its job, as you can see. Um, you can't really see the optics behind there, uh, but they are the same as everything else. So this that that's where I'm at with the Bradley then, guys. Um, I'm calling it done. It's just going to be static, um, <clears throat> and that that's it for this one. <clears throat> the only issue I had from where I left you was the tracks. Uh, <clears throat> they're a little bit um, tedious to try and keep together. Some of the links, when you put them together, they don't actually lock on um, properly to hold the weight of the track. So when you try and build the, the full thing, or 80 links, I was having issues with the tracks falling apart. So all I did, in just in the centre of the track by the guide horns, I've just used some Tamiya thin, just in between the, the tracks there. Just to give it a little bit of substance, so you're actually able to hold the track together. To then try and get it on and it's just manipulating it into the shape you want with this moving suspension and everything 
um, and then joining it together and it's all good uh, but that took a little while to figure that out um, but other than that I haven't had really any issues with the kit as such from where I left you everything's gone together perfect um, and that's where I'm at so I hope, hope you enjoyed the the update on this one and you like the look of it uh, it's going to go sit next to the 432 and then from here it's on with my next kit which I'll be doing an inbox review of which I'll show you in a second um, just so you know what I'm doing and that'll be me for this update um, so any questions comments or anything like that if you'd like to message uh, leave comments and that in the sections below message me whatever like, as you guys normally do if you point out anything that you think I've done wrong or anything then feel free um, so yeah that's me on that so let's move the Bradley out of the way <coughs> and the next project <coughs> which I'll do an inbox review of is that which is the Academy um, it is Academy isn't it yeah the Academy Magach 6B Galbatash uh, now that's a hell of a mouthful so I'll do an inbox review on that shortly and then I'll start building that one so that's us for now guys and I shall speak to you very very shortly thanks for your time